So I just started going through the block for a Mission Impossible build. That's what we're doing with David Vizard and Andy from Unity Motorsports. And I figured, well, this is a good time to talk about block preparation. Because if you're building a high performance engine, you really gotta go that extra step and you can't let any details go unnoticed. Like things that'll be fine on a regular passenger car, just you drive to work, drive to school, you can get away with. When you start pushing an engine, see these things are designed a certain way, they're designed to take a certain amount of abuse, a certain amount of flexing and, and harmonics, vibration. But when you start pushing beyond that, things that would normally be okay, daily driver, start to become an issue. So these are like general good practices. You could apply this to any engine build, but it's especially when you're doing something high performance. These are the areas you got to go over. So, first step with anything like this is to give the block a good basic cleaning. It's not a finished cleaning, don't go nuts with it because it still has many phases to go. But you obviously want to get all of the dirt and gack and loose oil, you know, oil and get that all off of there. Because you've got to give the block a good thorough visual inspection. You need to look at everything because stuff like cracks, thin spots, occlusions, any defect that you could have on a casting, this is when you need to find it. You need to know whether you're going to keep going with it or you're going to abort the mission. Even if you're going to bore the cylinders, you still give them a hone at this point because you want to be able to see clearly what the cylinder walls look like, top to bottom. With that inspection process, what I do is I include the inspection process with the detailing of the block. So this way, as you're going through it, detailing it, you're literally focused in on every little piece of it. And so something you may normally overlook will jump out at you. So what do I mean by detailing a block? When these things are cast from the, from the foundry, they don't really finish them. They do all of the basic machining to it necessary to put it together, but they don't bother cleaning things up. So you'll find as you go through any production block, you're going to find well, here's a perfect example. You're going to find casting flash all over the place. See, like right here, this casting flash. Look at this lifter bore. See the casting flash on it? This one here, all around here. Now you can see these two I've already cleaned up. I've taken the die grinder and I've run around and just knocked all of that flash off of it. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. First, because it's flash, it's not really, it's not structural. So there's a good chance that when you really push this thing and it starts singing, you know, six, seven thousand RPM, that some of it, loose parts of it, vibrate off. It's not an integral part of the casting, it's just kind of hanging on. So anything that's just hanging on, you want to knock down with a die grinder. Also, they are potential stress risers. Actually, any sharp edge inside the engine is a potential stress riser. Cracks don't start in radiuses. Cracks end at radiuses. They start at sharp edges. So, here's an example right here. This side of the block is as it came from the factory. So the valley and the deck surface where they meet is very sharp. Okay? The sharp edges are always a potential stress riser. On this side of the block, I took my grinder and I just dressed down those sharp edges. Now you want to go through the entire block and any sharp edges that you find anywhere on it, those are the ones you want to clean up. Now just because a block was running in a car, functional doesn't mean that it doesn't have cracks. I've found many of these that have, let's say minor cracks, cracks that will be at the very top of the cylinder bore, the very bottom of the cylinder bore, that haven't run into a water jacket yet. And so they don't show themselves as, as a problem as going down a road. But now when you start pushing this thing, the block starts contorting, those cracks will spread. So again, hone the cylinders and then all around the very top and the very bottom of the cylinder bores, You've got to check for any sorts of cracks, any, anything that doesn't look right, because that will be an issue when you start pushing this motor. Now, talking about cracks, we'll get to that stuff falling out in a second. Talking about cracks, 
the main saddle areas where you'll find the most troublesome cracks because a cracked cylinder you can sleeve it but when you've got a crack anywhere in the spine of the block anywhere between the cam bearing and the main saddle it's junk there is nothing going to do with it now you can take an engine that's that's been run in service it can have 200,000 miles on it and it can have cracks in the saddle area but because the block is never stressed they don't give you a problem now, when you actually push an engine, and especially if it ever sees detonation cycles, what will happen is the crank is being driven down. It's being driven against the caps. And the things that hold the caps in place are these bolts. And this is the bolt boss. So this area right here on both sides is what's supporting the crankshaft from all of the forces working down. What you'll find is you'll get a crack that'll start right here on either side of the oil hole. On some engines, like the small block fours, they'll crack right through the center of the oil hole. But most engines that I see cracked in the saddles are going to be to the sides like this. And that crack will spread over the bolt boss right here because this is the section that's trying to pull away. And then eventually will work its way up into the, into the bore itself. So you can have an engine that, let's just say, during the course of its life, overheated bad, got into heavy, heavy detonation and cracked in that area. But because it's just being used for regular service, it won't show itself as a problem. But now you step on this thing and that crack is going to spread and it's going to want to throw the crankshaft on the ground. In extreme cases, it'll split the block right in half. But these areas right here are definitely your number one focus area for looking for any type of cracks or imperfections. So while we dress down all of the sharp edges around the block, around the top side, you want to do the same thing to the main saddles. So you can see this one here, which is machined for the thrust bearing, has a nice radius edge to it. But this one here has a sharp edge. All of them do. So you want to take your die grinder and again, just lightly break the edge. Just break the edge. Don't do it in this surface right here because any, you don't want to do anything in the bearing surface where the bearing sits. But on either side of the saddles, you definitely want to dress those down. Any area in here, see this is very sharp right here. All of this, you want to clean this up. Along the, the outside, along the pan rail, it's just good general practices. There should never be a sharp edge inside of an engine smooth it, radius it. Same thing with the main caps. The outer portions of the main caps, there's a very sharp edge. So all of this gets dressed down as well. So now, any rebuild should include knocking the freeze plugs out and going through the water passages. When you're doing a high performance engine, you want to go that little extra bit. Now, even if you're going to send the block out and have it boiled, if you've got serious deposits inside the water jackets, it's not going to penetrate that. That stuff will not come out. You have to physically break it. And what you want to do is obviously knock out the core plugs. I've got one out right here. You want to knock out the core plugs and scrape all through anything that you can reach with a screwdriver. You can use a variety of different sizes and styles of screwdriver, but you want to get through and you want to scrape any surface that you can. Now this block already knocked a couple of these out. You can see what we got here. So the fine stuff will come out with the boil, but when you get these chunks, they'll tend to stick to the surfaces inside. You know, rough surface, hard chunk, and it just kind of glues there. Passenger car, it may be fine, but let this thing sing at 6,500 for a couple of seconds. The harmonics in that block are gonna shake this stuff loose, and it's gonna find its way all through your cooling system. While you're at it with this, you wanna take a wire like a coat hanger, a stiff wire, and you wanna pass it wherever you can. You wanna pass it through between the cylinder bores, between the liners. Because you'll get chunks built up there that boiling will not remove. So you gotta break that stuff loose.
so that when it is boiled, the acid can get on there and actually give it a good cleaning. It will, you push an engine and that stuff will absolutely break loose and start finding its way around the cooling system. You could tap around the block also. I found here. You can hear the stuff falling out through the water jackets or the, the water passages in the deck. The whole block. Do the whole block like that. And the valley. Because the valleys are one part of the water passages, the water jackets that you really can't get to. There's no core plugs up there. So you want to tap around. Sometimes even heat it. Take like a, 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 a map gas torch and heat the valley of the block in it nice and hot and then tap around. And you'll be surprised. You'll be amazed at some of the crud that'll just fall out the bottom. What else do I want to talk about with this? Bolt holes. Obviously, you want to go over the bolt hole. So now, this <laughs> stuff just falls out of there. That's just from the little tapping I just did, what fell out. So, here's the thing you gotta, you gotta think about. If you're just doing a straight rebuild, the bolts that came out of the engine are the bolts that are going back in, and they're the right depth. But now, you're gonna machine this thing, okay? So you're gonna take 10, 20 thousandths off the deck, you're gonna take 10, 20, 30 thousandths off the cylinder head, you may use a thinner head gasket, now bolt length becomes a problem. You have to make sure that the bolt holes are clear all the way through, that you've got an even depth to all of the holes. So on this block, as I'm going through it, my depth on all of these is even, okay? And then I get to this one, Okay, and there's, that's as far as it goes. Same down here. This one not as bad as this one. All right, so you see the difference? Now, if, as this thing was assembled, as it was running before, this bolt was in and torqued and everything was fine. When you deck it, you're adding distance that the bolt has to go. So if a bottom's out, if that bolt can't go any tighter, it'll torque, but it won't actually clamp the head. So there you've got a potential head gasket sealing issue here. You have to go through all of the bolt holes and make sure that they're equal, at least equal depth to each other and that they're tapped all the way through. They may not be tapped all the way. So I'm running a bottoming tap, getting a pick in there, picking out any crud or gack that might be at the bottom, and I'm running a bottoming tap to make sure that the, th the threads are clean all the way through. You, you can't overlook anything. And stuff like this right here, that'll get you every time. Here's another thing. Now this block is, is gonna be surfaced. So these holes are gonna have to be chamfered later. But I want, you to, I want to show you this. This is important. So look at this bolt hole right here. Right? You see it's got a nice chamfer all the way around before the threads start. This one also has a nice chamfer all the way around. But now look at this one. You see the way it's flush with the top and it's not even round all the way. This is where a thread starts. Not chamfered. This one is chamfered. Now w this is the way it came from the factory. Well, why is this one nice and chamfered? This one is nice and chamfered, this, but this one here is cut flush like that. That right there, that little bit of overhang, as you torque this thing down, there's a good chance that this chips out or cracks out, and then you've got yet another stress riser, another place for a crack to start. Or I've even seen them where you'll have a head gasket issue, and it's because as you torqued it down, uh, this will chip out and it'll, it, it'll wedge itself between the gasket and the deck. So you want to make sure that, especially if, you, if, you, if you're not going to have it surfaced. If you're going to have it surfaced, you'll chamfer all little holes afterwards. But if you're just putting it together without surfacing it, make sure that you don't have a situation like this. Just, just give it a quick chamfer and you're good to go. Now, these oil drain back holes, I, I, I meant to say something about this before but you can see there are oil drain back holes here 
alongside the lifters and none of them are like round or the shape they're supposed to be. They all have a little bit of flash in them. So all of those, you want to clean those all up and make sure that they're smooth and, and, and nice. The oil's got to flow down. So any surfaces that, that can catch oil, that can catch dirt, and you want to make sure that they're all cleaned out so that it can all flush down into the pan the way it's designed to. It takes time to go through a block. And I tell you, if this was, go this was going to be a dyno motor, but if this was actually going into one of our cars, there's a lot of extra weight that you'll find on one of these blocks that, that is just left over from the casting process. Like, for instance, these, these nubs right here, right? This section of the block just overhangs. Um, if you go through the block, you'll find tons of extra metal or things that you can thin and grind down. or whatever. You can get at least five, six, seven pounds out of a block. It adds up. In extreme cases, if you go back to like the days of like pro stock, 72, 73, 74, when it was still running, you know, factory castings, those guys, not only would they grind the side of the block smooth, some of them went so far as to completely grind all of the cast iron off the side and then bolt aluminum plate to it to seal off the water jackets. And nobody expects you to go that far these days, but just showing you like the lengths that people went to back in the day to get weight out of these things. So you could put a ton of time into detail on one of these blocks. I'll probably have a full day in this thing by the time I'm done. Because in addition to everything I've talked about, all of the oil galleys have got to be brushed through, make sure that there's nothing in there. And you want to do all of this at this stage of the game, before the block actually goes to the machine shop. So that when they have it, and it's, it's cleaned, machined, you don't have to go back and start grinding and cutting and, and doing all kinds of nastiness to it once you're at that point. From there, you want to do just your final clean and your assembly. So any of the dirty work or potential dirty work, this is the time you want to do it. And like I said, it may not show up, may not show up in, in the numbers, but it'll show up in longevity for sure. Well, sometimes it does show up in the numbers. It depends on what we're talking about. But the detailing of the block, these are really good general practices, but especially, especially if you're going to be doing a high performance build, anything that's going to be stressed. So from this point, it goes off to David. I have no idea how he's going to spec this thing out at, at the machine shop, what's coming off the deck or anything like that. We're going to leave that up to him and we'll pick that up on his channel. So I'm going to get back to this lots and lots of grinding to do. So I hope you got something out of that and I'll see you tomorrow.